In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, good people of God. Today is Tuesday, the 6th of April, 2021. It is Tuesday within the octave of Easter. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Father Blessed. Good morning, and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. O God, who have bestowed on us paschal remedies, endow your people with heavenly gifts, so that possessed of perfect freedom, they may rejoice in heaven over what gladdens them now on earth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 2, verses 36 to 41. The psalm is taken from Psalm 33, and the response to the psalm is, His merciful love fills the earth. The gospel is taken from St. John, chapter 20, verses 11 to 18. I read from the first reading. On the day of Pentecost, Peter said to the Jews, Let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all that are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other words and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and they were added that day, about 3,000 souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The theme for today's meditation is Win others over to God by your witnessing. Win others over to God by your witnessing. Dear friends in Christ, we continue reading the post-resurrection appearance stories and the witnessing of the apostles to the truth of the resurrection. Yesterday we were exhorted to be witnesses of the truth, to proclaim the truth of the resurrection, the truth of the gospel, and we were exhorted to do so 
by our very lives. Today, the first reading explains that if our witnessing is authentic, if our witnessing is true, then it must provoke others, especially non-believers, to conversion. Authentic witnessing equals to conversion. Authentic witnessing initiates and inspires true conversion. Dear friends, if your way of life has not challenged others around you to ask questions, and if your life has not provoked them to think and rethink about their own lives, then perhaps you may either not be an authentic witness or you may not just be witnessing at all or enough. As a bike rider or a driver on the highway, your ways or attitude should provoke others of your type to ask questions, but why are you different? Why don't you ride as we do? Why is it that when passengers talk to you, you react differently? Yes, your ways and attitudes should provoke them to ask questions. As a soldier, as a teacher, as a priest, as a politician, as a civil servant, as a lawyer, you must witness and Christianize your work such that you push others to ask questions and to want to be like you positively. In today's first reading, after Peter and the apostles witnessed, the people, we are told, were cut to the heart. The witnessing of the apostles touched the people and it led them to ask this very important question. Brethren, what shall we do? By this question, they meant, We have listened to you. Your words have touched us. Your witnessing has provoked us. Your life has moved us. Now, what can we do to be like you? This is the fruit of authentic witnessing. It leads to conversion. Even in your neighborhood, your neighbor should be able to ask you, but neighbor, what is it that inspires you? Why is it that despite the problems we have, you always react differently? Authentic witnessing initiates true conversion. It was the same question the people asked John the Baptist after listening to him preach. His words pricked them and they asked, What must we do? So too, dear friends, your life must prick others. As a Christian, can you say your Christian witnessing has won over a non-believer unto the Lord? Or can you say your witnessing has made a lapsed Christian grow strong in their faith? Or do you rather by your life scare them away? Have you, by your good behavior, made others attracted to your field of work? Or do you make them yes, sigh and hail insults at others of your type in your profession? Beloved of God, the long and short is, your witnessing must provoke others to conversion. You must be the Bible some will read. Let others ask you, as the people asked Peter, what are we to do? How can we, or what do we need to do to be like you? We are attracted by your way of life. We are moved by your witnessing. What do I need to do to be like you? Your life and your witnessing must challenge them enough. In your office, in your place of work, your colleague or colleagues or others should ask you, but why are you different? And why do you act differently? Someone should be able to walk up to you in private or public and say, I admire you. I like the way you do your things. I want to be like you. Goodness and authentic witnessing have a way of being contagious. Let people not copy only bad things. Let them be moved to copy your goodness. And how will they if you have not challenged them enough? How will they if you have not witnessed enough? That is the challenge of today's meditation. Live your life and witness in such fashion that someone or people will walk up to you and ask, What do I need to do to be like you? For the grace of being positive influence to others, and motivate us for their conversion, Lord, we pray, that others may see us 
in the way we witness, in the way we live our lives and be converted and won over to you. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you forever. Amen.